I will show you my thumbnail design process in Canva for two different thumbnails. I keep my thumbnail designs organized in four different Canva projects, sorted by different categories and topics. This helps me make sure all my thumbnails are consistent and I don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. Additionally, I can reuse the same assets across my designs and I don't need to spend time searching for them. Once I open my project, I click on the grid view in the lower right corner to see all my thumbnails. I have a few themes organized here, keeping my Google account and Google Sheets separate. As I am designing a thumbnail for creating a Gmail signature, I will try to use the same fonts and design styles consistent with the topic. I'm going to pick a thumbnail to copy by hovering over it in the upper right corner until I see three dots and then select duplicate page. Then I will grab it and move it where I want, arranging them in order from oldest to newest by category. Then I will hover over the slide number until I see a pencil icon, click on that and give the page a name. This name will be the title of the exported image. Then click once on the image to open it for design. I will remove all assets that I don't want right now by selecting and clicking delete. Now I will start typing the new text for my thumbnail. I want to reuse the same fonts to stay consistent. I also want to reuse the Google colors that I have here. So I will select each individual colored letter to type email. I will reorganize a little, remove more of the old text and type signature. Because the word is rather long, it wraps down. To make it fit to the text box, grab the box handle and stretch it to fit the text, then resize it. I will adjust and reposition again. You just have to keep testing, finding a good balance between the words. To change the text to all caps, select it and click on the uppercase letter icon on the ribbon. Sometimes the letters are spaced either too far or too close, or they don't fit perfectly in the space you have. To fix that, you can adjust the letter spacing under the spacing option at the top. Right now, this looks very boring, so I have to keep working until I'm happy with it. I will change the font of the word signature. I want something that looks like handwriting, indicating a signature. I'm going to search for handwriting fonts and test them. I love the Alex brush font. I use it a lot in my designs. It is beautiful and very readable. Now I'm going to import few assets that show example of an email with a signature. I have a dummy email here that I want to use. Before I import it to Canva, I will remove certain sections. It is easy to remove a background in Canva, but to remove sections from a screenshot is trickier than I can quickly do with Apple Preview. To import it, I will drag it to Canva, then resize and reposition it. I'm going to import one more item, an example of a signature that I created with the HubSpot tool. I want the dummy email to be more visible, so I will add a drop shadow to it by selecting it and going to edit photo. Then select the shadows. Once I select drop shadow option, I will play around with the settings until I'm satisfied with its look. I'm going to move the signature section to my dummy email, but before I do, I will lock certain items in place since I keep selecting them inadvertently every time I click near them. Select one or multiple and then click on the lock to keep them in place. To crop an image, click on the side of its border and adjust its size. Then I will adjust the placement. I want to add a profile photo, so I will go back to my other project and copy it from there. Then resize it by grabbing its corner and moving it inwards to make it smaller or outwards to make it bigger. This looks better, but I want the signature text to pop more. I will select it and click the effects option at the top. I'm going to use the outline effect and play around with the outline color to something more interesting. To test how it stands out, I like to zoom out with my trackpad or use the zoom option at the bottom right. 
Then I'm going to test out few more colors. I think the bright green is the best, so I will keep that. Honestly, picking colors is always the hardest for me. I also want to add a Google Gmail logo so that it is obvious what platform the video will cover. I will find an icon in one of my other thumbnails, or if you don't have it, find it on Google search and import it. Because I decided to keep this thumbnail clean with a white background, I want to add a border to it. I will copy it from another thumbnail so it has the right size. To modify the border, select it and change its color and thickness on the ribbon in the top left. Since the border was the last thing I added, it is located at the top layer of my design and interfering with me trying to adjust the other elements. To move it backwards, select it and click the position at the top, then move it completely to the back. Final touches is to give the text a little bit more room from the border so it doesn't look cramped. And voila, this looks pretty good. I will do one more design a thumbnail for my text channel. You can add a new blank page in between your designs by hovering over the plus sign or just right click on one of your designs and duplicate it, then edit the name. First part of business, I will remove all my assets except the two fonts I want to reuse. Then I will change the font color to black so I can easily see what I'm doing. Now I will edit the text to what I want my thumbnail to say. To duplicate a text, select it and click Option on Mac or Control on PC while dragging to make a copy of it. You can select multiple objects to move them around. There are two ways to add text background. The first way is to select your text, then go to Effects and use the Background option. Here you can adjust the roundness, spread and transparency, as well as the background color. I don't really like using this option because I always feel the spread is uneven or too much on one side of the text. The second way and the one I like to use is to add a shape underneath your text and modify its color. Add a rectangle, then resize it to fit the text, then change its color. Final touch is to select the text and background and group it so you keep them together while making further edits. Another thing that you can add to your thumbnails are shapes. I will add a rectangle and cover one half of my thumbnail, the cons section. Then I will change its color. I also have to move it to the back so it doesn't overlap my title. For the pros, I can change the background of the slide. If you can't find a perfect color swatch, click the Add a new color option and try to either manually find a shade you like or add a specific hex color. You can also select gradients here. Now let's add some assets. I'm going to search for a check mark in the Elements section. Then from the results, select what I'm looking for, graphics. Graphics are great because you have more control of changing its color to what you need. I'm also going to search for an X mark. Sometimes it can be difficult to find one you truly love, but once you do, it's good to keep it either by incorporating it in your designs or by favoring it. I'm going to change the color for my con side. If I have two different icons in my design, I like to keep their size consistent by overlapping them and adjusting so they are the same size. To align text, select it, then go to position and under align elements, choose the middle for horizontal alignment and center for vertical. I always get these two confused. If you make a mistake, like anywhere else, use the undo command. Command plus Z on Mac or Control plus Z on PC. Now, I don't like the font of the pros and cons text. I will try it in my favorite font lately, the permanent marker. It is playful and informal while still very readable. This still looks pretty basic. I want to personalize it by adding an image. I will go back to one of my other designs and copy it from there. First thing you can do is retouch it under Edit Photo then adjust the level of skin smoothing to your liking. Second thing I want to change is that shirt. 
Let's try to use Canvas AI under Magic Studio and selecting the Magic Edit option. Here you have to brush over the part of your image that you want to change, or you can even select the entire image if you want to apply a specific effect to it. I'm going to brush over the shirt with a larger than smaller brush. I can undo any sections I made a mistake on and can also zoom in for better control. Then I'm going to describe what I want. Since this is a financial video, it would be fun having a shirt with dollar signs on it. The tools generates four different results. If you don't like any, click generate new results. I was not getting what I wanted, so I will go back to the description and try to modify it. At this point, I give up on this original idea, so I will try finding a different work shirt. Most of the results were either silly, bad, or just not what I wanted. It took many iterations to get something I kind of like. This tool is better for generating objects. Another thing you can do to make this photo pop is to outline it under shadows. Then play around with the color, size, and intensity. I like to use white color. Then I will move it slightly below the border so the outline at the bottom is not visible. One more thing I want to add to make this more fun, a graduate hat, since the video is discussing college plans. If you are not finding what you want, select a result that you like a little, then right click and select the see more like this option. It doesn't always work, but sometimes it is great. Then I'm going to resize and reposition the hat. To rotate it, click on the rotation icon next to the image. This looks pretty good. I will zoom in and add final touches to it. If you want to paste one asset style to another, use the copy style icon at the top. It's a quick way to copy and paste styles in Canva. Once the thumbnail is ready, I can export it by selecting the share option, then download and just selecting the current page option. I don't need all 60 pages. I will save it as either PNG or JPEG. Good luck and thanks so much for watching.